Fox News alert for you now. The White House just releasing the president's budget plan. It proposes over $700 billion for the Pentagon. And next year, it would rise to $716 billion, allowing for more money to be spent on troops, training, ships, and hardware. It's not only the largest budget the Pentagon has ever seen, but also a far bigger military budget than either China's or Russia's. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis expressing support for the new plan yesterday. I am very confident that what the Congress has now done and the president uh, is going to allocate to us in the budget is what we need uh, to bring us back to a position of primacy. Indiana Congressman Jim Banks sits on the House Armed Services Committee. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. It's only an outline and a proposal from the president. It's appropriations that actually hands out money. But this is a lot of money. What do you think? Well, it's a lot of money in the right places. Uh, when we look at what's happened to our uh, military since 2010, a nearly 20 percent cut in funding uh, to our troops, to our military, to our uh, defense priorities. Uh, this, this president and administration deserves a lot of credit for making that the priority in, in the fiscal year 2019 budget. So I largely applaud uh, the, the priorities that have been laid out, but we have, we have a long ways to go to make sure that that remains the priority as, as, uh, as members of Congress as we debate this along the way. It does highlight the priority, and I know the president matched it with some cutbacks in domestic spending, but it really, when you look at the totals, it it would do nothing to get spending under control. I mean, there are a lot of people out there who pay taxes and, and watch their money go to Washington. And while we want to support the military, it's frustrating to see people come together over spending. And it seems like never over making really tough decisions about cutting things like entitlements. How do you respond? Well, that's exactly what we have to do. And uh, to, as, uh, to be responsible to address the, the fiscal status of our federal government looking forward. We have to find a way to balance the budget, uh, hopefully in doing that over the next 10 years. This budget doesn't get that far, but it gets close to that. And the, the administration deserves credit for that. But as the as the appropriations committees, as the budget committees come together and, and address uh, the fiscal picture looking forward, it's going to take a lot of work. But that's, a, that's exactly the type of leadership that the American people elected Republicans to provide uh, that, I, that I hope we will follow through with. Do you have any hope that will really happen, though? I mean, we always hear sort of platitudes and, and good words and good intentions. And then when it comes to actually getting in committee and making tough decisions, everyone seems to remember that they have to be voted back. It seems like something very fundamental has to change in order for the the government to get its fiscal house in order. Well, don't forget that last year, uh, in, in my first year in the House of Representatives, we did pass a budget out of the House that would have balanced in 10 years. It cut uh, several hundred billions of dollars of, of uh, spending to make that happen. We also passed a health care bill that would have been the first effort uh, ever in the House of Representatives to scale back entitlement spending and, and Medicaid expansion. So it has happened, at least on the on the House side. It's going to take leadership from the Senate as yeah. well to make that a priority to cut back spending. And, and hopefully we'll see that occur in, in, uh, when it comes to the fiscal year 2019 yeah. budget. Uh, if I can turn to another subject, so the memo back and forth continues. The Republican side claims the president looked at the memo the Democrats wanted to point, put out, saw a lot of things in it that the FBI had highlighted as possible um, you know, breaches in security, sent it back to the Democrats to then decide what to do about it. They say that the Democrats have not looked at it further. Meanwhile, um, um, Congressman Schiff had a very different point of view on Face the Nation. I'll ask you to listen and respond. Their goal here is to put the FBI on trial, to put Bob Mueller's investigation on trial, and the president is only too happy to accommodate. But the president doesn't want you to see these facts from the FISA application because it completely undermines his claim of vindication. Congressman Banks, what do you think? Well, it's, that's complete hogwash. In fact, uh, the president has made very clear that uh, he's open to releasing the Democrat memo, but it needs to be scrubbed to make sure that any uh, classified uh, issues or anything within the document that might be a national security risk should be should be scrubbed from the document. And it should be. I've, I've read the Democrat memo. Uh, I was among the first mem one of the one of the first members of Congress to call for its release. It should be released to the American people, but in a responsible way. And it, it's my understanding that President Trump uh, supports uh, that release as well, with a couple of caveats of making sure that it's not. Uh, releasing any information that would be a national security threat. Real quick, does it largely contradict what Republicans say? Does it prove that a lot of it was inaccurate, yes or no? 
Uh, no, not, in fact, it, it reads like a political document, but in many ways it concedes many of the key points that the Republican memo makes as well. It should be released to the public. Let the public decide for themselves. At the end of the day, the outcry for accountability uh, from both yeah. of these memos is loud and clear, and that's, okay. that's, that's the direction that we should take to hold those accountable who abused the FISA process. Congressman Jim Banks, thank you. Thank you.